Hello and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Thank you for joining us. I am Lydia ODJ Ochi. Senate has commenced the screening of the seven ministerial nominees. The screening commenced with a nominee from Abia State, Henry Ko, where the senators were particularly interested in knowing how these appointees will contribute to job creation, industrialization, more revenue generation, and improved security. The Senate urged them to be mindful of the duration of the appointment if confirmed to enable them to engrave their names in gold. This country, this great country, can build modular refinery in most of the Niger Delta state. We need to take advantage of that. As managing director of the Oil and Gas Free Zones uh, Authority, I have initiated a number of reforms, uh, have led an administration in that agency which has been transformative. The one year that you will be in office is a long period because it depends on what we do. You could be there for one year, but your impact could be there like you've been there for 10 years. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has passed for second reading a bill to establish the Nigerian Entrepreneurship Development Bank, aimed at easing access to finance for small businesses in the country. When established, the bank will provide medium and long-term loans for indigenous small businesses, particularly those owned by young persons, to enhance financial inclusiveness. The legislation seeks to encourage aspiring entrepreneurs and growth of small-scale enterprises in Nigeria to promote economic development. The bill is jointly sponsored by Representative Benjamin Kalu and Olaleko Afolabi. The House Ad Hoc Committee investigating unclaimed funds in commercial banks and the CBN has given a marching order that funds belonging to unidentified individuals or owners without BVN in commercial banks be transferred to the Central Bank of Nigeria. National Assembly correspondent Dayo Ogunshola reports that this was when chief executive officers of some commercial banks appeared before the investigative committee. The fact-finding committee of the Great Chamber reconvened. This time, both chief executive officers of concerned commercial banks as guests. They are to answer questions relating to non-payment of expired advance payment guarantees, transaction taxes, funds on accounts without BVN, and dormant accounts amidst other remittances. I don't know if it's possible, sir, for us to have uh, the breakdown of the accounts without uh, BVN uh, that amounted to this figure. It's your responsibility to look for the next of kin of those funds, or you transfer it back to the central bank. The central bank, because it can't be hanging in your in your bank for 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 for, for eternity. Not every individual account operated in Nigeria does need the BVN. By a CPN regulation, it's called a wallet. I will take the position. Exception to this position to their position until you see that directives were giving room for further reconciliation of figures. The committee stressed that the nation's financial regulations must be respected and therefore overstate monies must be remitted forthwith into government pause. The essence of this exercise is to use that money to properly utilize that money to bridge budget deficits. And that's the major issue that we're having right now as a company. So this exercise, by the time we complete it, I know that um, all funds recover will help the federal government. From the National Assembly, Dayo Gunshola, NTA News. 
One Amira Sufyan, who faked her kidnap, has been arraigned before an FCT chief magistrate court, Wuse Abuja. Olabo de Arewa reports that the defendant's false claims were made using the social media. The defendant, Amira Sufyan, was arraigned in court by the police on a one-count charge of lying to a public servant, specifically for sending out a false information to Twitter that she had been kidnapped by some people in police outfits. Her action, which took place on 14 June this year, generated public reaction, leading to the police swinging into action to rescue her and 16 others she falsely claimed were kidnapped along with her. Police investigations revealed that she lied, an offense contrary to Section 140 of the Penal Code. Upon her arraignment this Wednesday, she pleaded guilty to the one count charge. The prosecutor, James Idachaba, tendered exhibits indicating that Amira had a mental illness, which may have influenced her actions. He prayed the court to give her a non custodial sentence. Since her defense counsel, Chinyere Moneme, did not oppose the motion, presiding magistrate Chukwemeka Nweke agreed and ordered that she should be released conditionally to a probation officer to enable her undergo a 12 month psychiatric care. The act has been committed, but the mental state is a little bit uh, not uh, established because it's not of a, uh, of a sound mind. Uh, um, I would say it's justice for the defendants, for the society itself, and, and for the police force. During the period of her probation, she must be of good behavior to qualify for a final discharge under the terms of her sentencing in Abuja Labodarewa. NT News. Governor Belo Mohammed of Sampara State has assented to the law that prescribes death penalty against ki against bandits, kidnappers, and other related criminals. This is part of new measures to tackle the protracted security challenges bedeviling the state. Jamilu Ibrahim has more. Bill to provide for the for state prohibiting and punishing banditry, cattle wrestling, cultism, kidnapping, and other incidental offenses law 2022 was on Monday this week passed by the state house assembly. Governor Bello Muhammad, who assented to the law, says it is aimed at tackling the persistent security challenges bedeviling the state. Every person found guilty of banditry, kidnapping, cattle wrestling. The law also stipulates that anyone found aiding or abating banditry and other related crimes is liable to life imprisonment or 10 to 20 years jail term depending on the level of his or her involvement without option of fine. The state under our watch will continue to explore all possible remedies while commending members of Zamfara State House of Assembly for keeping up to their constitutional responsibility of making laws to secure the state, Governor Ibello Bahamar also elogized what he termed as federal government's relentless efforts towards achieving lasting peace in the state. In Gusawu, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. The recent directive by the Zamfara State Government for citizens to arm themselves with legitimate weapons for protection against bandit attacks has continued to elicit responses from Nigerians. Security experts who were guests on Good Morning Nigeria insisted that the measure will be at the detriment of the citizens. Ekene Ndulwe reports. Bandit attacks and other violent crimes have become a regular narrative across states, leading to loss of lives and property. The inability of security outfits to curtail the situation from escalating has left many states looking for creative ways to tackle the challenges. Apparently, Zamfara state government has become overwhelmed with the problem and has called on residents to take ownership of their own protection. First step of that process has begun where we design forms uh, which we distribute to the um, traditional rulers in the 19 emirates of the state for people wishing to have legitimate weapons to fill them. The proliferation of firearms in the hands of private individuals will compound the issue, says security experts who believe only conflict entrepreneurs will gain from the engagement. Because the process of giving everybody firearms to bear, you'll find some that are insane, some are still in crime, some that have claimed they've uh, uh, repented, 
will go back to crime again because of the level of poverty, joblessness, homelessness. Given the poverty level in this country and given the fact that an AK-47 costs nothing less than one million naira, you are concentrating, you are just widening the gap between those who have and those who haven't. In the sense that who can afford a weapon to defend himself? At the root cause of all of this is that inability to manage, especially adapt, um, change, adaptation and changes to resource management that climate change has, has brought. The guests believe that a constructive engagement for the citizens, solving issues of poverty, improving governance, prioritizing security and enforcement of strict deterrence for offenders across the country, as well as elaborate collaboration with other state governments, will go a long way in containing the security situation in the country. Ekene Ndulue, MTA News. Following the recent collapse of a National Grid, an expert in electrical solution and metering, Kola Balogun has called on the federal government to leverage on emerging technologies has been practiced in the advanced countries to end incessant national grid collapse in Nigeria. He stated this in Abeokuta, Ogun State at a public lecture on distribution, substation enhancement as a clue to incessant Nigeria's national grid system collapse. Leko Agwande reports. Worried by the trends of national grid collapse, with attendant consequences, an expert in electrical solution and metering, Kola Balogun, says Nigeria, as a matter of urgency, needs to fully integrate some of the existing technologies into the nation's energy sector to reverse the trends and improve energy efficiency. He appreciated the federal government for its frequent interventions and recommended the adoption of modern technology as panacea to the problem. Let us we appraise the situation. Let us look at low hanging fruit where we can have between the consumer and the distribution company how they can get 24 7 power. So, and that's why the interface, which is substation, let us design a panel or an infrastructure that will be able to bridge that gap. Other speakers at the lecture, including the state governor, Dakwa Biodun, represented called for power sector revolution. Our governor knew that energy was a big issue. So in addition to having Ministry of Works and Infrastructure, he created an energy board. Whichever sector of engineering we are, make sure that we are positioned to support the elected officers in this country to make sure that the best decisions are taken in the interest of the country. In Abeokuta, Lekon Agmode, NTN News. The National Biotechnology Development Agency, NABDA, is seeking the partnership of venture capitalists in mass production and commercialization of indigenous biodigesters to enhance power generation in the country. This move comes as the agency has now been empowered with the legal framework for the rapid commercialization of biotechnology research and development products. Justice Ben Muni reports that this is after President Muhammad Buhari signed the National Biotechnology Development Agency Establishment Act 2022. The significance of this act, it has strategically poised NAFTA to pursue its mandate of driving national development by ethically harnessing applications of biotechnology. The agency's Establishment Act, recently signed, has propelled the agency from the status of a promotional agency to that of a research institution. This development is said to depict Nigeria's readiness to harness cutting-edge technologies for sustainable development, particularly those that guarantee better life for all Nigerians. One area of concern is the persistent challenge of energy generation, where the agency has over time researched into and has produced biodigesters that could be deployed especially for use in rural areas. I'm optimistic that private sector participation in biotechnology will extend the frontiers of economic development and thereby abet Nigeria's over-reliance of petrodollars. 
now with the act in place to stimulate rapid commercialization of research findings. The Director General of NABDA says an array of inventions are on the shelf for the organized private sector to take advantage of. Research efforts by the agency have unveiled new varieties of transgenic hybrid cotton and cowpea, improved livestock genetics and technologies for the dairy industry, as well as partnerships to promote joint research in tissue culture, drug and vaccine manufacturing to drastically reduce importation of medicines from 70% to 20%. In Abuja, Justin Bemuni, NTA News. The Sultanate Council Advisory Committee on Religious Affairs says Wednesday, 29th June 2022, which is also the 29th of Zulkida 1443, shall be the day to look for the new moon of Zulhija 1443. This is contained in a statement signed by the Chairman Advisory Committee on Religious Affairs and Wazir in Sakoto, Professor Sambo Wali Junaidu. The statement requests Muslims to report sighting of the new moon to the nearest district or village head for onward communication to the Sultan of Sokoto, Mohammed Saad Abubakar. It's now time to join Kende in Lagos for more on Nationwide. Over to you, Kende. Thank you, Lydia, and a warm welcome to Vegas. The resolve by the federal government to move Nigeria up the ladder in terms of standardizing the educational system in the country has um, encouraged over 600,000 students gaining admission to acquire first degree at the National Open University. Pro Chancellor of National Open University, Professor Peter Kibukola, while addressing the media and the academic performance of the institution, said the board is working assiduously to increase enrollment to one million students in a couple of years. Aboladi Salami reports. National Open University of Nigeria since inception into the Nigerian higher educational system brought about change to the style of learning and teaching. Pro Chancellor of the institution, Professor Peter Kibukola, while ruling out academic activities of the institution said, management has maintained standards in its six flagship programs and is working towards replicating the same for other courses accredited by the university commission. The university is a bit to transform the delivery method by the aggressive use of digital technologies as embarked on the integration of instructional videos to all courses. It is so that before the end of the year, this drive will strengthen the multimodal delivery system and ultimately provide varied opportunities for students to learn at any place at their place. On the approval of new study centers, Professor Kebukala said the expansion is to encourage more Nigerians to imbibe the culture of learning. As the council of the institution notes with delight, pleasing reports from the first set of law graduates cleared by the Council for Legal Education into law school. The resolve of the management to uphold professional ethics in academics he emphasized will be maintained. In Lagos, Aboladi Salami, NTA News. Drug tariff traffickers and their sponsors have no choice but to quit as the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLA, says it will not relent in waging war against them and the court. Area Commander NDLA Tinkan Port Special Area Commander Papa Mohammed Abubakar retreated this at a sensitization work and lecture to mark this year's International Day against drug abuse and illicit trafficking in Lagos. Then Ajale reports that the theme for this year's celebration is addressing drug challenges in health and humanitarian crisis. Current statistics by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, UNODC, put Nigeria's prevalence rate on drugs at 14.4%, which is approximately 15 million people. Out of this huge number, about 80% are said to be youths. As the fight against curbing the menace of drug abuse and illicit trafficking continues, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency believes that, aside arresting those who indulge in such acts, effective collaboration and public awareness campaigns will go a long way in changing the narrative in Nigeria. The awareness work which commenced from Tinkan Island Command Head Office at Papa Port was taken round the various parts of the port axis down to Tinkan Island Trailer Park. 
to advise individuals to say no to drug abuse. What they are doing is just a good one because this campaign has to start somewhere and uh, we have to take it down to our homes. The event also featured lecture on signs of drug abuse on the person, health implications and effects on the society at large. You should understand they are the leaders of tomorrow and you cannot be a leader while you are an addict. Area commander National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, Tinka Special Area Command, Papa Mohamed Abubaka, noted that the agency will continue to suppress the supply of illicit drugs across the country. Very soon, NDLA is going to launch 24 hours, 7 days call center, whereby anybody, that, like people who are operating with stigmatization, that is coming forward to show themselves as a user or addict to these uh, drugs, they can call. So far, between January to June 2022, a total of 1.739 kilograms of various drugs, such as cannabis indica, otherwise known as Colorado, Tramadol, among others, worth millions of naira have been intercepted, with nine suspects arrested in connection with the seizure and have since been charged to court. In Lagos, Diana Ajale, NTA News. That's it from Lagos. But before we go, we'd like to remind you that do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and all the social media handles displayed on your screen. We'll take a short break now. Sadia will take over from Sokoto after this break. To seven kilometer Lagos Ibadan Railway is the first double track standard gauge railway to be built in West Africa. The Mobalaji Johnson train station is a masterpiece, an infrastructure that is gradually becoming an iconic building in Lagos State. The modern facilities put the station on a world map of train stations. Likewise, all the new train stations across the country built to world class standards. The train and its convenience is indeed an admirable effort with commendations from Nigerians. This is a station that we have to commend the federal government for putting a beautiful face, empowering us in Lagos State, not only in economic and political arena. I can say that I'm really impressed with the infrastructures in place. Kudos to the Minister of Transportation, kudos to the federal government. Truly, good things are coming out of Nigeria, and the federal government is deserving of all the applause. Now, what could make someone set out on a journey and not get to his or her defense? Now, imagine um, the victim who cannot reach out to these responders. Who doesn't really? even have the phone to reach out? Hello, thank you very much for joining us on platform. I'm Ruth Agwe. Especially if the girl is a minor, she's not yet 18 years. If she gets pregnant, realize that such girl is sent out of school and the boy is left in school. Just talk to pick the call. So how much sensitization is there for us? I don't agree. A lot of people are just deaf. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NTA International is with you, in your living room, office, everywhere and anywhere. We provide the company you desire, in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. Tune in to the STV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Preview UK Channel 264, or you can download www.regentv.co.uk, Apple iOS or Android. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. International. After swindling to the world. Motlalo! Motlalo! Nigeria are the ninth champions in this competition! The 12th edition of the Africa Women's Cup of Nations is here with 12 teams including reigning champions and 9 time winners, Super Falcons of Nigeria, all in contention from July 2 to 23 in Rabat, Morocco. You can catch all the actions live on the NTA Network Service and NTA Sports 24, Channel 270 on Star Times, 434 on StarSat and 731 on Free TV. Come, join us to promote another championship round by the Super 
Falcons. For your advert placement, please call Hawa on 0803 312 Africa Women's Cup of Nations, Rabat 2022. Game on! Minister of Interior Ogbeni Rauf Aregoshola has called for the use of DNA system to improve database of correctional facilities and by extension check incessant escape of inmates. He made the assertion at the second controller general of corrections retreat, Sokoto 2022 in Sokoto State. Sheikh Muhammad Deti has more on the report. The Second Controller General of Corrections Retreat Sokoto 2022 Sokoto State brought together seven and retired controller generals as well as senior officers of the Correctional Service. Minister of Interior Ogbeni Rauf Arek Bisola, while underscoring the aims and objectives of the retreat, said it is high time to begin the use of DNA system in correctional facilities in Nigeria so that escapees from correctional facilities can easily be tracked down. They must add collection and storage of DNA of whoever comes into the custody of the Nigeria Correctional Service. Declaring the retreat often, Governor Amin Waziri Tumbon, represented by the Deputy Manir Nya, call on the Correctional Service to critically assess its performance and take stock of its challenges for a better Nigeria. We are going to support their efforts morally and financially. In their separate goodwill messages, Attorney General and Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, represented by Commissioner for Justice Sokoto State Suleiman Usman San, and Minister of Police Affairs Muhammad Megri Dengari, assured of their continued support towards the congestion of correctional facilities as well as speedy dispensation of justice in the country. Trial General of Correctional Service. Alru Nababa said there are 244 correctional facilities across the country, 582,000 inmates, and the service had ensured participation of inmates in various education programs. The retreat is expedient at its proper headquarters, a valuable opportunity. The Minister of Interior, while in Sokoto, inaugurated the newly constructed Nigerian Correctional Service Headquarters, Sokoto State Command, designed to provide a conducive environment to enhance performance. In Sokoto, Show Muhammad Deti, NTA News. Suspected bandits have invaded Adia farms along Bodinga Road close to the Sultan of Bakari III International Airport, Sokoto, and wrestled more than 300 animals. Owner of the farm, Abdullahi Adia, says over 135 cattle and over 180 rams are missing as a Tuesday morning. Sheikh Muhammad Ditti again quotes. Speaking to newsmen on the incident, Abdullahi Adia expressed worry, calling on the authorities concerned to rise up to the challenge so that citizens can go about their lawful businesses without fear. He said security staff recovered some of the animals in the nearby bushes. Uh, as now we are counting, we know that it's about almost uh, 125 to 35 missing bulls. And uh, for the rams, we are still on it. We could not see up to 180. When contacted, the police says they are aware of the attack and have deployed their tactical team to the scene of crime for proper investigations. Police Public Relations Officer Sokoto State Command, DSP Sunusi Abubakar, who confirmed the incident, said the victim is yet to properly brief the police on the matter. DSP Sunusi Abubakar said the police will address the press on conclusion of investigations. In Sokoto, Shio Muhammad Deti, NTA News. And that's it from this end. It's now back to Lydia in Abuja. Thank you, Sadia. The National Social Investment Program, NSIP, has been described as the largest intervention initiative put in place by the federal government towards poverty alleviation in the country. Ruth Aguele reports that this was emphasized during a stakeholders' engagement on compliance check exercise for the NSIP, convened by the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management, and Social Development in Abuja. According to reports, as many as 4 in 10 Nigerians live below the poverty line, 
and as part of efforts by the federal government to address this growing concern, the National Social Investment Program was established in 2016, targeted at the poor and vulnerable groups. Despite successes recorded, challenges are inevitable. This is why the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development is engaging relevant partners to carry out compliance check exercise for the NSIP if sustainability must be ensued. Each of the program has been carefully designed to address specific social economic challenges and protect Nigerians from poverty, economic shocks and social exclusion by increasing the income and livelihood of the poor and vulnerable as we oppose. On this program, that the president has even put a performance index of lifting 100 million people out of poverty in the next 10 years, the goal is very, very clear. To us, lifting people out of poverty, we are already doing it. Accountability and that of transparency that is being laid by the ministry is something that posterity will love to preserve. And the 2030 Agenda envisions a present and a future that is economically sustainable, socially inclusive, and environmentally resilient. This strategy by the Ministry is to expand the social protection programs, ensure effective implementation to build an inclusive society for all. In Abuja, Ruth Aguele, NTA News. The National Orientation Agency is urging citizens to adequately monitor implementation of government policies and programs. This is from the standpoint that effective citizens' participation in governance is an attribute that stands out in a country practicing true democracy. Kenneth Nanim has more. If democracy is the rule by the majority, how are we are Nigerians of their rights to participate actively in governance? What opportunities are available for government and citizens' engagement towards policy formulation, evaluation, and monitoring of implementation, which is key to achieving the nation's social economic growth? The workshop involving the National Orientation Agency and its partners could perhaps unveil answers to these questions. When you set out a program or a policy, you monitor it and evaluate it at the end of the day. Have you achieved that desired uh, objective that you set out to achieve? So these are some of the things that actually made us to come up with this program. And definitely, by the time we get back to our previous offices, we should be able to at least do things better to improve the project implementation and how we carry out our activities in our various offices. The idea here is that if these civil responsibilities are practiced, the system would be more open to public partnerships needed to drive Nigeria's democratic process. We are encouraging transparency because you have to open up your agency for people to monitor and know what you are doing. This assemblage will sit for three days and is expected to come up with a feedback mechanism that will channel public views and opinions to government in order to build a robust channel of communication for public policy impact. Kenneth Nanim, NT News. Let's now join Obehi in Benin for an update from that zone. Hello, Obehi. Hello, Lydia. Thank you very much for joining us here in Benin. Continuity of good governance and policy implementation is non-negotiable if any state will achieve sustainable development of its people. Ekita State Governor Kayode Fayemi said this during the inauguration of the State Transition Committee and Advisory Council in Adoikiti. Kola Adebobuye reports. <laughs> Having concluded the 2022 governorship election in the state that produced Biodro and Payo Yebanji as winner, the composition and inauguration of a transition committee and advisory council were necessary in consonance with the state transition law 2019. The committee will, among others, study the state of affairs of the present administration, review programs and projects of ministries, departments and agencies, mapping out strategies for a smooth transition from the incumbent to the incoming government. 
Colonel Faimi commended the Kiti people for the trust in his administration, which gave APC victory in the just concluded election and assured continued implementation of good governance towards achieving sustainable development for the state. The transition committee is chaired by the secretary to the state government, Felicia Daramola, with members drawn from the civil service, academia, and the APC. In Nadwekiti, Kola, Adipabwij, NT News. A local government area in Edo State is earmarked for the trial census billed for 30th June to 11th July 2022. Ahead of the trial census, enumerators are being trained by facilitators from the National Population Commission on basic information and projections for the exercise in Ego. Paul Mukago tells us more. Statistics from the National Population Commission show that Edo State had a population of 3,233,366 from the 2000. Get genuine facts from them. This is just like a prototype of the actual census. So with this prototype, they will, not, they will be able to do some addictions and some corrections at the end of the day. They should cooperate with us and also give us their full cooperation. That's the maximum because without them, we can't do anything. The numerators are expected to move around communities, numbering houses, and enumerating members of households in the selected enumeration areas. It is the role of communities and residents to allow the enumerators to have free access to buildings and their occupants for a successful exercise. In Benin, Paul Mukago, NT News. And that's it from Benin. Don't forget to stay connected to this news broadcast live at, at nta.ng slash live or any of our social media handles displayed on your screen. And Abu Bakr in Meduguri will have more on Nationwide. That's right after this break. Good afternoon. Ever busy ancient city of Onija is a commercial hub with millions of commuters seamlessly linking other states daily for business, leisure, and other purposes. To upscale its road network, the construction of a 1.6 kilometer long second Niger bridge, including a 10.3 kilometer highway furnished with other infrastructure, has been in motion by the federal government. This project will ease congestion on the existing 56 year old Onita Bridge and boost the economic capacity of the state as it easily connects to other parts of the country. The completion of the world class second Niger Bridge Onita will be one of the many proud moments of the state, its people, Nigerians, and foreign investors. Onicha, which hosts the largest market in Africa, is geared up to boast of an impressive road network. Once again, these moments are made alive by the federal government and it is deserving of all the applause. The broadcast media ecosystem is dynamic and requires continuous training for practitioners to perform optimally. NTA Television College, JAWS invites relevant officers to the following specially packaged training programs. Intermediate online news reporting skills, date 13th July to 5th August 2022, 4 weeks. Sports coverage and reporting skills in the mass media, date 13th July to 22nd July 2022, 2 weeks. Basic camera operation techniques, date 1st August to 26th August 2022, 4 weeks. Advanced broadcast accounting and auditing, date 15th August to 9th September 2022, 4 weeks. Transmitter operations and maintenance, date 22nd August to 26th August 2022, 1 week. Workforce intelligence, key to organizational effectiveness and efficiency, date 5th September to 16th September 2022, 2 weeks. The course fee for 1 week courses is 100,000 Naira per participant. The fee for 2 weeks courses is 150,000 Naira, while the course fee for 4 weeks courses is 180,000 Naira only, accommodation inclusive. The venue for all courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA Television College near Old Government House, Rayfield, Joss. For more inquiries, please call 0803-079-5335 or 0806-9809807. NTA TV College, Joss, training you to be the best you want to be. Lalo! But Lalo, Nigeria are the ninth champions in this competition. 
The 12th edition of the Africa Women's Cup of Nations is here with 12 teams including reigning champions and nine-time winners, Super Falcons of Nigeria, all in contention from July 2 to 23 in Rabat, Morocco. You can catch all the actions live on the NTA Network Service and NTA Sports 24, Channel 270 on Star Times, 434 on StarSat and 731 on Free TV. Come, join us to promote another championship round by the Super the fall Africa Women's Cup of Nations Rabat 2022 Game on Up to this moment and the news now continues from Meduguri as normalcy continues to take root in local councils and people voluntarily return to pick up their lives, Borno State Governor Professor Babagana Umar Azulum has urged citizens to obtain permanent voter card so as to exercise their civic rights. The governor was speaking while integrating projects in Magumiri local government executed by the council and federal lawmaker representing the area. Mohamed Guni completes the story. Projects inaugurated by Governor Bagana Umar Azlim include boreholes, APC office complex, mass transit vehicles, market and shopping complex, among others. Two blocks of poor classrooms equipped with furniture, as well as instructional materials procured by the member representing the area at the Federal House of Representatives, Usman Zanna, to enhance the education sector were also launched. The governor applauded the giant strides made by the council chairman, Dr. Aliyaumi, in the 18 month of stewardship of the council. Professor Abagana Omara, who addressed residents during the visit, also called on them to enroll their children in both Western and Islamic schools and be more united for the development of their area. Member representing Kaga, Magumeri and Gubio at the National Assembly, Usman Zanna, and the state's FEC chairman, Ali Bukar Dalori, appreciated the efforts of Magumeri Council Chairman, Dr. Ali Yaumi, for carrying the people along and further reoccurred call to the citizenry to obtain their permanent voter cards as it's the only weapon to be used to elect leaders of their choice. Executive Chairman Magumeri Local Government Council, Dr. Ali Lawan Yomi, who enumerated the successes recorded within 18 months, said, efforts are being made to ensure that civil authorities and sustained peace are restored to the area. Hence, the council's continued support to the security architecture. According to the chairman, the council has put in place new Magumeri market comprising new shopping complex and stores, as well as provided complete furniture in the local government secretariat, recruited local bird attendants and environmental sanitation bangers to create jobs opportunity to women and youth, in addition to construction of APC secretariat and the provision of mass transit buses, among others. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. And back here in Maiduguri, the Borno State Capital, to focus our attention on issues concerning security now. Theatre Commander Joint Task Force Northeast Operation Hadinkai, Major General Christopher Musa says the command is looking forward to collaborating with defense advisors accredited to Nigeria to mitigate impact of terrorism for the benefit of mankind. The Theatre Commander stated this during a dinner organized in honor of 18 defense advisors from Africa, Europe and Asia who were on a walking visit to headquarters theater command operation hadinkai meduguri memuna garba will now tell us more the visit by the defense advisors to borno was to have an on the spot assessment of ongoing counter insurgency operations in the northeast and interact with personnel of the command theater commander operation hadinkai major general christopher musa had while appreciating the visit assured that the military will not relent until the needed peace is finally restored this is just the beginning of it. We've made contacts. We will proceed from here. And I can see uh, better things coming ahead. Your countries are some of the major partners of the Nigerian government and have remained on the side of the Nigerian during these difficult times. Leader of the delegation, who is also director of Foreign Liaison Defense Intelligence Agency, Major General Edward S. Buba acknowledged the critical efforts of the theater commander and GOC in restoring relative peace to the region. The purpose of us coming to Meduguri was to understand the challenges of the operation as well as the successes that have been achieved. Defense advisor from India, Colonel Rumidi, equally appreciated the peace in the Northeast as a result of the military intervention. Meduguri town 
is actually bustling with activity and peace is returning to the area and uh, we hope that in future the situation stabilizes further the 18 defense advisors are from china zambia poland morocco denmark south korea france and uganda among others in my and those are the latest stories for now from Meduguri. Let us at this point return to Lydia in Abuja for more reports for us this evening. So, Lydia. Thank you indeed. Still on security, the Nigerian army is urging the public to develop measures that employ tactful and mediatory conflict resolution approaches rather than resorting to violence. This was contained in a message from the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, to a news conference heralding the commencement of activities marking the 2022 annual Nigerian Army Day celebration. Nigerian Army Day celebration is an annual event of the Nigerian Army held on 6 July of every year to commemorate the unfortunate Nigerian Civil War broke out. When the first shot that commenced the war was fired at Garkin in present day Cross River States. This year's celebrations mark the 159th year of Nigerian Army's existence since its formation. The 2022 NATSEL is focusing on repositioning the Nigerian Army in a joint environment, a panacea for success in addressing contemporary security challenges. It also reminds us of the No Victor, No Vanquish slogan at the end of the Civil War, underscoring the need to promote national unity, peace, and cohesion strengthened by our diversities. This event is built for Oweri, Imo State, as approved by President Muhammad Buhari. Ahead of the 2023 general elections, a special team of senior police personnel has been constituted to manage security during the elections. Force Public Relations Officer Olumu Yuwa Adejobi says the team is also to equip officers with necessary skills on election security. Francis Form has more. The, the teamwork we put uh, on grants actually paid off and that's why we, we had a very good uh, and a successful election in uh, Ekiti. It is a briefing to review the performance of the force during the AKT governorship election, identified challenges with a view to overcoming them in future elections. Senior police officers of the rank of deputy inspectors general police, DIGs, assistant inspectors general police, AIGs, commissioners of police, TPs, and other aides of police for missions, and carefully selected security and election management experts across the globe to engage in peer review and cross fertilization of ideas on effective management of security before, during, and after the general elections in 2023. We have full confidence in the professionalism, competence, and preparedness of the Inspector General of Police, IGP Akali Baba Usman, the police management team and the officers and men of the force to discharge their fundamental responsibility as enshrined in the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria force public relations officer assures that a retreat for the rank and file has also been organized on their conduct during elections francis from ntn news the british high commission in nigeria has called for free, fair, and credible ele governorships election in Oshun, which is expected to set precedent for the 2023 general elections. The political advisor, British High Commission, Wale Adebajo, made the call during an audience with Governor Oyetola in Oshubo. Bolaji Akim reports. A visit, the commission emphasized on the need for every stakeholders, including security agencies and electoral body, to operate within the stipulated guidelines and electoral laws. The British High Commission expressed readiness to monitor the election as international observers. Our responsibility here is to national elections. While appreciating the commission.